He looked at his three daughters and he says, I feel like I'm looking at three graves. And she said, no, there are three doors to Jannah. And I want to just tell you these stories of people that I know who are living today, not in the olden days when you hear all these fairy tales and stuff, right? Today. And they're real people about the power of Iman and the resilience that one can grow from Iman. Okay, the first is a friend of mine I met uh, probably about five, six years ago. Some of you may have heard me speak about her. She, at the time that I met her, told me her story. She said that many years ago she had a daughter, and when her daughter was around three years old, her teacher called and said, your daughter just stopped talking. She's, she's not talking anymore, and we don't understand what's wrong. So she, you know, that was strange. So she took her to the doctor, and eventually the doctor told her that her daughter had a rare genetic disorder called MPS. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with MPS, it is a disorder that has no cure. And what she was told, this mother was told, is that your daughter, who right now is perfectly healthy, is going to slowly lose all of her faculties until she dies as a child. She's going to lose all her faculties, slowly. You're going to watch her do that. And there is nothing we can do. There's no cure. So she will lose her ability to do anything. And they said to her, don't expect that she will live past, I think, 13. And then she told me that she had another child, another daughter. And this daughter was tested. And the doctor told her that she also had MPS. And then she had a third daughter. And she also had MPS. And so this woman had three children, three daughters with MPS. Every single one of them, she was going to have to watch them slowly die. Literally lose the ability even to swallow. To swallow. Do you know, you know our ability to swallow? This is something that I never, I was never thankful for it because I never even realized it. That the ability, that your ability to swallow your saliva is a nama. It's a blessing. Because these, when you can't swallow your saliva, you choke on it. It goes in your lungs. She was actually having to suction them because they couldn't swallow their own saliva properly. So it was making them choke. Then she had a fourth child with severe autism. Now, why do I tell this story? It isn't to tell you, you know, that this is a really, really hard situation and then just leave. The reason I tell this story, and, I, and I'm just going to tell you that I have, I've been to her home, I've witnessed uh, how she lives. Uh, basically, her children, her daughters grew into their teens. And by the time I met her, the three daughters were, uh, I think they were all teenagers, and they were all completely bedridden. She had, she, they were on machines. She literally like, didn't sleep. She was uh, constantly caring for them. Like, her home was like a hospital. There was a section that was like a hospital. I also, um, recently, she lost two of them. One of them lived until she was 19. For 19 some years, she took care of this child and, and her other daughter. And, and now uh, one of her daughters is still alive. May Allah make it easy for them. And the reason I tell this story is because of who this woman is. I just, if I brought her here today, you, you would say she was the most She's always smiling, subhanAllah. But the thing that really hit me is that one day she said to me, I'm drowning in gratitude. That's a, that's a direct quote. 
Now, what amazed me is that she has a trial in her life that I couldn't even wrap my mind around. And yet she has this trial, and she's saying she's drowning in gratitude. And to me, that's a sign of God, that the power of Iman to allow a person to not just withstand a little bit of rain, a little bit of snow, but a tsunami, and to not be broken by it, to not be destroyed by it to the extent that you can actually show gratitude. And one of the things that she always says to me is that she always looks at those who have less than her. She says she's always, the thing about her is that she's always worried about the people who are suffering somewhere else worse than her. She doesn't look at her situation and say, why me? But she actually shows gratitude because she looks at those who have less than her. When she first got the diagnosis, there was something really powerful that shook me. And that is that her husband says to her, when he was looking at his three daughters after hearing this diagnosis, and you can imagine what that feels like as a father or as a mother, he looked at his three daughters and he says, I feel like I'm looking at three graves. And she said, no, there are three doors to Jannah. But I want to tell you this because these aren't cliches, I promise you. These are real life. These are people live, living their real life. And she recognized that this was her door to Jannah. But that's what happens to a heart when it is healthy. It is a completely different heart. And it doesn't mean that, it doesn't mean you have to be a prophet or you have to be perfect. No, a regular person who takes care of their heart just as it is prescribed can become like that by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.